President of the Republic of the Philippines, Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Senate President Vicente Soto III and the Honorable Members of the Senate, House Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano and the Honorable Members of the House of Representatives, Vice President Maria Leonor Robredo, former President Joseph Ejercito Estrada and Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, Chief Justice Yusdado Peralta and the Justices of the Supreme Court, His Excellency Munter Mahfoud Salim Almantre and the esteemed members of the Diplomatic Corps, Executive Secretary Salvador Midaldia and the members of the Cabinet, mga mahal kong kababayan. troubled time. A dream of prosperity for our country was suddenly snapped by a pandemic virulent virus. No nation was spared. Neither rich nor poor were exempt from the onslaught of this deadly disease. But let us not despair. The vaccine is around the corner. Sooner and not later, the virus that gobbled up thousands of lives will itself be laid to rest. In the meantime, let us express the nation's gratitude to those who courageously and willingly put their lives on the line to serve the people and country. We share the griefs of their families and no amount of tears can compensate their great losses. My countrymen, it is sad that while government focuses its attention and resources to battle the coronavirus there are those who take advantage of a preoccupied government. One of them is Senator Frank Dillon. In an interview, he arrogantly mentioned, among others, that oligarchs need not be rich. Then he linked the anti-dynasty system with oligarchy and the topic was my daughter and son. This happened after the Committee of Franchise voted 70-11 to deny the grant of franchise to ABS-CBN. Obviously, he was defending the Lopez's that they are not oligarchs. Great wealth enable economic elites and corporations to influence public policy to their advantage. Media is a powerful tool in the hands of oligarchs like the Lopez's, who use their media outlets in their battles with political figures. I am a casualty of the Lopez's during the 2016 election. The dealers and purveyors of illegal drugs hiding in the shadow of COVID-19 have stepped up their activities. The amount of shabu valued at millions of pesos seized during police operations speak volumes of the enormity and the weight 
of the problem that we bear, the corrupt, the grafters and the influence peddlers also take advantage of their fear and confusion. The coronavirus generates the financial and material assistance of government to the unemployed, the sick and the destitute running into billions of pesos are not spared from corruption and ineptitude. Even the donations for well-meaning private persons are schemed before reaching their intended beneficiaries. It is like snatching food from the mouths of the babies. The profiteers, overpricers, and the corrupt felons must be laughing while they stash their dirty monies, but not for long. They cannot outrun the long arm of the law. In these regards, the words of former President Ramon Magsaysay ring fresh and relevant today as the day they were said decades ago. He said, we need men of integrity and faith like Rizal and Del Pilar, men of action like Bonifacio, men of inflexible patriotism like Mabini. We need their seal, their, rely, their self-reliance, and their capacity to work, their devotion to service, and their ability to lose themselves in the common cause of building a nation. If we allow greed and self-interest and ambition to rule us, then as stated by one prominent physician, we will be left with nothing better than the lesser evil instead of the greater good. In my inaugural address four years ago, I said that no leader can succeed, that anything of national importance without significance unless he has the cooperation and support of the people he is tasked to lead and sworn to serve. The efforts and resources which he poured out produced the momentum needed to bring our country closer to our goals. Suffice it to say, we made significant strides over time. Over 4.3 million poor families benefited from the Pantawid Pampanila Familia. Over 92.2 million beneficiaries received subsidies under the Unconditional Cash Transfer Program. We also made available tertiary education and universal health care. Public utility drivers were given assistance to the Pantawid Pasada program. There are complaints that some drivers did not receive any assistance at all. I have directed the SWD and DIRG to look into this. I welcome the passage of the law postponing the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections. The postponement saved much needed government funds and ensured the implementation of projects under the current Barangay officials. In the hindsight, it also saved us from holding the polls while we dealt and continued to deal with the pandemic. The Malasaket Centers Act has proven to be a great help to our less fortunate citizens, needing medical services to one-stop 
platform in government hospitals. We commend the initiative and work of Senator Bongo in this regard, as well as other significant pieces of legislation as of today. There are 75 Malasakit centers serving Filipinos all over the country. These centers will be of great help in ensuring that our people remain healthy and resilient during these challenging times. The salary in the standardization law of 2019 increases the salaries of civilian government workers. I hope that this law will inspire our government workers to perform better and encourage young, brilliant citizens to join public service. I appreciate the law of establishing the National Academy of Sports. We can now give our deserving student athletes the training and the support they need to excel in their chosen field of endeavors. With the commitment of key members of Congress, the Executive Department, the FISGO, or the Philippine Sports Commission, and the Philippine Olympic Committee, we are bound together with our vision to host the 30th Southeast Asian Games. Our athletes prevail. More than that, we fostered pride, patriotism, genuine sportsmanship, and camaraderie in our South Asian brothers and sisters. Indeed, we won as one. To our business community and the general public, we assure you that the landmark ease of doing business an efficient government service delivery act has been gaining momentum. Uh, we are closing of closer to eliminating over-regulation in government services. Frontline processes, including consular services, processing of building and business permits and the services of overseas Filipinos and seafarers were streamlined. Passports and driver's license validity were lengthened to ease the burden of the public. We received a BBB plus credit rating despite ASEAN credit rating downgrades and negative outlook revisions in the world, worldwide. The Japan Credit Rating Agency upgraded us from BBB plus to A minus last month. Meanwhile, Moody's has affirmed and maintained the country's ratings at BB2, BBAA2, rather. Uh, to understand, because of the light, I have uh, uh, my uh, eyesight is not as good as new. Our fiscal position is strong. Our economic fiscal management prudent and our banking system robust. We are in a better position to weather the crisis caused by COVID-19 global pandemic. We have accomplished significant infrastructure projects under the Build, Build, Build program. I will not dwell lengthily on the nitty-gritty of our infrastructure accomplishments. Now, lest I bore you. Instead, we will release a comprehensive written report of our collective milestones and the details of accomplishments that remind us 
that perseverance, patience, determination will help us move forward even in the most difficult times. We issued last year the Executive Order Number 100, establishing the university, the diversity and inclusion program as national program of the government. We want to end discrimination of persons on the basis of age, disability, ethnicities, sexual orientation, and gender identity and expression, and other character traits. My administration always believed that freedom from illegal drugs, terrorism, corruption, and criminality is itself a human right violation. Part of our efforts to uphold human rights is protection of the rights of children and the right against discrimination. Early last year, I signed Executive Order Number 92, creating the National Council Against Child Labor. Government efforts to protect the rights of children will be amplified to prevent, reduce, and eliminate any form of child labor. Our achievements along this line who have been extolled by an overwhelming number of fellow member states in the UN Human Rights Council during its recently held 44th session last June. Rest assured that we will not dodge our obligation to fight for human rights. My countrymen, there are lessons to be learned from the coronavirus pandemic. It jolted us to realize that gains made after spending so much planning, effort, cost, and time could diminish considerably and quickly for reasons beyond one's anticipation. That it is much easier to destroy than build that in a crisis of national proportion that affects every aspect of human life, government needs to have the support and cooperation of the people if it, if it is to succeed in battling the cause of that crisis. That there are people who ask for compassion but show none themselves. That life after all is fickle like the weather. The gains we achieved for the first three and a half years were put to a test when the pandemic suddenly struck the global community. While I am aware that the road towards a comfortable life would all be far easy if the pandemic had not occurred and around the rest of the world we suffered. The global scale and socio-economic impact of COVID-19 pandemic has been unprecedented. Yet, in the throes of its global health emergency, we have been able to withstand the headwinds generated by this coronavirus. In this regard, I would like to express my gratitude to all those who made possible the steady supply of food, water, basic utilities of our household. and the provisions of basic social services and financial assistance to our people. Our profound gratitude goes to everyone 
to help keep our country's food supply chain running. The valiant soldiers, policemen, and security guards who keep peace and order in our community. The dedicated personnel who kept our essential establishment operational you showed us kindness and selflessness. You gave us strength. You risked your own lines to serve the greater good in keeping the Filipino spirit of Bayanihan. I also thank the men and women of the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases and the National Task Force against COVID-19 for all the countless hours it spent to keep the pandemic in check and for all the efforts it made to ensure the safety of our people. <laughs> Let me also recognize the efforts of the local government units that step up and initiated their own response measures to contain effects of COVID-19 and its impact to their constituents have been an impact to its constituents. The shadow says it's a, a period there. I know exactly the difficulties you are undergoing. I pray that the officials of each LGU in our country, from the barangay to the autonomous regions, would set aside partisan politics and selfish interests to do what is right and good for all. Likewise, I likewise issued Executive Order Number 104 which impose ceilings on retail prices of at least 133 drugs and medicines and directed a continuous review of the retail prices of others. This proved to be provident, prov, providential now that we are facing a pandemic. To everyone who helped us in this time of great need, maraming salamat po. Let me say that the strength of a nation rests in the hands of the people acting as one with government. In the pursuit of common goals and objectives, when the pandemic struck, I decided to prioritize life over other considerations according to experts. The intervention that the government had put in place prevented as much as 1.3 to 3.5 million infections. To me, even if the numbers were much lower, it would still be and would have been worth the sacrifice we made. Buhay muna bago lahat. We initially encountered difficulties ramping up our testing capacity. We now have 93 accredited testing laboratory, laboratories nationwide. And we are aiming to conduct 1.4 million tests by end of July and ensure a quick turnaround time of 48 to 72 hours. Under the social amelioration program, we allotted 2.5 billion or 2, 2 million five billion for poor and low income households who are affected during the worker during this pandemic who thrive on a no work, no pay arrangement. Admittedly, our implementation of the social amelioration program was not perfect and some opportunity 
opportunities turn crisis into opportunity. We will catch up with you sooner than you think. We came up with the COVID-19 Adjustment Measures Program extended financial assistance to over 650,000 affected individuals in the formal sector. 110 OFWs abroad and almost 83,000 repatriated OFWs were also provided temporary wage uh, employment to displace marginal workers to the TUPAD project. Our indigent senior citizens were also provided with a stipend for the rest of the semester of the year current, current year. The third emergency stretched government's resources to its limits in response to the office of the president work closely with Congress for the quick passage of the Bayanihan to heal as one act. May I again reiterate my thanks to you, the men and women of Congress, for the effort you invested in passing that law. I hope that we can get some or the same treatment of clarity, purpose, and the fastness to support the passage of the Bayanihan Recovery to act as one which is supplement funds for recovery and response against the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. We must facilitate the country's economic recovery. I call on Congress to fast track the passage of the proposed measure, such as the corporate recovery and tax incentives enterprises or great act. This immediately cuts the corporate income levy from the current 30 to 25 percent and give government flexibility to grant a combination of fiscal and non-fiscal incentives, among others. The financial institution's strategic transfer will first up will set up mechanisms allowing banks and other financial institutions to dispose of and transfer non-performing assets and loans to asset management companies similar to the special purpose vehicles. Our economic managers have seen infrastructure investment as an effective tool to help spur high growth, attract investments create jobs, and achieve financial inclusion for all Filipinos. The DBP has resumed the construction of the North Luzon Expressway Harbor Link, the NLEX SLEX connector, the Cavite Laguna Expressway, the Metro Manila Skyway Stage 3, the Irwan Bridge Project, the Tarlac Pangasinan La Union Expressway project and the Subic Report Expressway project, to name a few. To realize the maximum benefit from the country's investment, the infrastructure projects under the Build, Build, Build program, which are labor and capital intensive and not mere springboard to the country's swift recovery pan pandemic. They are economic benefits, economic benefits uh, to be distributed to all corners of the country and push sustainable st stability in the urban centers, particularly, particularly Manila. The 
Vista launch online mode of livelihood and, and skills training. There has been the one free online training to help upskill trainers for the right opportunities. Opportunities, I'm sorry. I ask Tesla to come up with special training programs to retool our OFWs so they can find employment opportunities here and at home. I am also calling on the CHED for scholarship programs for the qualified dependents of our OFW. I direct the Department of Agriculture and DTI to come up with the agribusiness and entrepreneurship projects to help displace OFWs rebuild their livelihood. Further, I ask the center, the, the land bank, and other government financial institutions to continue providing low, low interest loan, loans to our OFW. Sa mga kababayan ko na naghihirap sa ibang bansa, nandito na ang inyong gobyerno para matulungan kayo at inyong mga pamilya, lalo na sa panahong ito. <laughs> the government will intensify its efforts to help businesses, especially micro, small, and medium enterprises, or MSMEs, by providing responsive government assistance and services capitalization and business operation support as we adapt to the next normal. Namanawagan po ako sa ating mga lessors. Namanawagan po ako sa ating mga lessors. Malasakit at banaybayanihan po ang sana ang ipairalin natin ngayon. This is not the time to drive away laces. During normal times, they were the primary source of your income stream. Now it's time to be fair and compassionate. Come up with an amenable arrangement with your tenants. Wag po natin silang pagtabuyan, tanggalin ang tubig, kuryente at bubong. Commercial establishments are requested to give grace periods to allow deferment of payments, especially for MSMEs that are forced to close down during the quarantine period. Let us help them recover. <laughs> we pump prime the recovery and rehabilitation of the MSMEs. The DTI to the Small Business Corporation set up the Philippine 1 billion COVID assistance to restart enterprises or CARES program to provide zero interest loans for MSMEs affected by the pandemic as of July 10, 2020. Over 2,600 loans applications worth more than 182.5 million have been approved. We are optimistic that this initiative will help our MSMEs stabilize and recover from their losses. I also enjoin the Banco Central ng Pilipinas and the banks operating in the country to provide regulatory relief for our MSMEs and allow loan payment extension without incurring penalties and charges. We need your help to prevent the collapse of companies saddled with accumulated amortization 
and payables caused by closure of their businesses at the height of the strict quarantine periods. As we embark on this effort towards inclusive recovery, we should acknowledge that all forms of government support will go to knock if the new MSMEs do not thrive because of lack of consumer support. Ito ang panahon para suportahan natin ang ating mga kababayan na nanaginigosyo at gumawa ng mga produktong sariling atin in the same manner in tourism and recreation industries which are among the hardest hit by the pandemic count on our full support while we slowly try to put the fund back in your local travels the national government agencies and LGUs must harmonize their policies to boost tourism ensuring everyone's well-being we join our people to help boost the economy by traveling locally. <laughs> Local na lang. Once the necessary system are in place, the DOSD offers its enterprise technology upgrading program to enable businesses to access training that will help them transition to online and contactless operation. Now more than ever, we need to protect our consumers. I direct department, the Department of Trade and Industry to ensure the empowerment of Filipinos on consumer rights and co coordinate strategies between public and private organizations in building a fair, safe, resilient, and sustainable economy. <laughs> there are welcome developments for commerce and industry, but major economic activities take place in borderless environment with the meager regulatory controls. They expose consumers to various risks related to security, data, privacy, and misrepresentation. We must patrol the country's cyberspace and enforce online consumer and data protection and privacy laws. We must run after online scammers and those undermining the people's trust the online on, on the online tr transactions. We must continue to protect Filipinos in the normal and remind the world that we are responsible stewards of data. I am committed to protect both physical and digital lives of our law-abiding countrymen. The national government shall lead the way in our transition to online systems. I reiterate my call for all government instrumentalities to implement systems that shall make physical queuing a thing of the past. Panahona para mawala na ang pila para mapagsilbihan ang gobyerno ng walang kahirapan para sa tao. The DILG, DBM, and the ARTA, along with all agencies and instrumentalities of government, are hereby directed to make full possible services available online. We need to adjust and adapt a paperless type of business and work performance. We need 
governance governance our people with our people with the services they need and the comfort of their homes and the work or workplaces. It will enable us bureaucracy, our bureaucracy to, to better transition into the new normal and cut red and minimize red red tape. Until the COVID-19 vaccine is available, I will not allow the traditional face-to-face -face teaching or learning unless the risk of exposure to the sickness and are eliminated. I cannot and will not put to rest the health and lives of our students and teachers. Young about two weeks ago, I, 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 I seem to have said that uh, uh, I would allow the face-to-face -face, uh, classes to resume. And we were talking actually of January. Because my thinking is that uh, by September, we would have the vaccine how to get it from the producers or from other governments is really something which uh, we have to deal with because everyone, the, 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 it's, it's a global need and everyone will go for it. But uh, let me just uh, mention it in passing that uh, about four days ago I made a plea to President Xi Jinping that if they have the vaccine can they allow us to be one of the first or if it's needed if we have to buy it that we will be granted credit so that we can normalize as fast as possible. Life that is lost is, li is lost forever. Courses that are not substantial can be supplemented. Education that is delayed can be recovered. We must implement online learning modular learning and TV and radio based broadcasts which students coming from different backgrounds can avail. TEPED will provide the printed modules for those who cannot afford online learning. In support of the learning continuity program through blended learning, we plan to increase the number of schools with ICT equipment in the coming months. The DEPED and the DITC are building up the public education network or pen that will connect all public schools and DEPED offices nationwide. We will prioritize the connection of all last mile schools and those who with no electricity supply can have it via satellite and energized via solar panels. By 2022, before I step down, the pen shall be realized. I'm referring to the program. I will, I will do it. TV frequencies reverted back to government for whatever cause or reason shall not be used exclusively to the exclusion of other persons or other dummies to cope up, to cope up with the demand of the next normal. This will be used to provide uninterrupted quality education to our children in a shift 
to e-learning. I am directing Secretary Guevara, Secretary de la Peña, and Secretary Onasan, in collaboration with Secretary Brunes and Secretary Abisado, together with Secretary Dominguez, to come up with an integrated program and implementation mechanism to ensure that these TV frequencies are fully utilized by government through the facilities of the PTB4 for the utmost benefit of the Filipino people. <laughs> Let me just uh, allow me to segue a little bit. For the remaining two years of my term, all that is good that belongs to government, whether it be the airwaves, whether it be the lines, or whatever uh, that is uh, good for the people, will belong to the government, and it should be government who should be given the first option to utilize them, ang subra kanila. I call on our communication companies to improve their services lest we be forced to take drastic steps to address the less than deal service that the public is getting from you. Alam mo, sisingit na lang ako dito. Sometimes we are a government picture to be weak and incompetent because we cannot really force our mandate. Alam mo itong nagbibigay ng mga public services. You better improve. Huwag naman ninyo kaming pahintayin sampung taon bago kami makakamit ng mga services that the other countries are enjoying. If it's just a question of uh, added capitalization or uh, the infusion of money, go and look for it. Maghanap kayo because if you are not ready to improve and no, I might just as well close all of you and we revert back to the line telephone at kokoning ko yan i-expropriate ko sa gobyerno alam mo itong LB straight yung smart pati itong globe ilang taon na ito At ang sagot palagi sa akin, the party cannot be rich. Kina saan pa na pumunta yung yawa na yun? <laughs> eh kung ganun lang naman ibigay ninyo sa amin, we are a republic, a sovereign country. Bear that in mind. Because the patience of the Filipino people is reaching its limit. But I will be the one to articulate the anger of the Filipino people. And you might not want what I intend to do with you. Kindly improve the services before December. I want to call Jesus Christ to Bethlehem. Better have that line cleared. Alam ko sa toto na ang adre na po ano-ano na ako sa inyo. I have been a citizen of this country and parang nilalaro lang ninyong 
kayong may pera may pera kayo negosyo kayo wala kayong pera putang umalis kayo dito yun na yung give us uh, half bills half cook transactions lousy service tapos ang tao nagbabayad tell us now if you cannot really improve on it because I will work by December I have two years the next two years will be spent improving the telecommunications of this country without you uh, I will find a way I will, I will talk to Congress and find a way how to do it Last year, I said that distributing economic business activities is imperative to our country's sustained and equitable growth. Today, I reiterate that statement. I issued Administrative Order Number 18, directing concerned agencies to strengthen the development of special economic zones in areas outside Metro Manila. I also issued Executive Order Number the same. 114 to institutionalize the Balik Province of Bagong Pangasa program. This consolidates and refocuses existing economic and social welfare programs, activities and projects toward the countryside. It is also it is also an international Agency Council headed by Executive Secretary Salvador Medaldia, which will create a framework for the effective implementation of the project. Kung hindi niyo ako na intindihan sa sinabasa ko, mas lalo ako. In 2021, we aim to increase access to healthcare services by continuously hiring and deploying more than 20,000 health professionals. This will augment health workforce in LGUs, particularly in isolated and disadvantaged areas. We will implement projects to establish and improve barangay health stations, rural health units, and other health care facilities. And we will need to address internal security. We are pursuing the whole of the nation approach to bring peace and order development in the countryside. We need to provide intervention and implement the Barangay Development Program. This will provide clear. This will provide cleared and threatened communities. And this refers to a program where the armed forces would play a vital role in the one nation approach. This is what simple what it is meant by this, and that uh, everyone. Every agency of the government, including the armed forces of the Philippines, should participate. And uh, I am aware of the skirmishes and the assassination of our soldiers. And I said, correct this so that we can proceed with the barangay implementation as fast as possible. We have made significant strides in the past four years, but we need the support of local government leaders. We need your help to implement the Barangay Development Program. Certain sectors express concern when I declared martial law in Mindanao and its extension three times. But 2019 ended without my, my office requesting any further extension. 
martial law in Mindanao ended without abuses by the civilian sector, by the police, by the military. But only because this time I know that they know how to love the country. I thank Congress for the support to this administration programs. Congress has been very productive, but much more remains to be done. You know, actually, my speech, if you if we followed it carefully, it's all a plea to Congress to do this, to do that, to make a law or craft a whatever. And this one is strongly urge Congress to pass a law in the Department of Overseas Filipinos, solely on addressing the concerns of Filipinos abroad and their families. I reiterate this few passage uh, before that, let's, before this. Kawawa kasi itong ating mga overseas. If it's only an office there in the labor department, we are over work or for whatever reason, their needs, their pleas are not really uh, attended to with dispatch and with care. Uh, OFW pati itong ano nga yun ito yung sinabi ko kanina I will go for it we will need it to help them I reiterate the swift passage of a law reviving the death penalty by lethal injection for crimes specified under the Comprehensive Dangerous Act of 2002. I did not hear so much clapping, so I presume that they are not interested. Someday I'll tell you the story of what happened to the Philippines. when I'm sabihin ko sa inyo ang totoo bakit nagaganito yung druga ng Pilipinas why why the drug syndicates continue to operate just like the countries of uh Colombia, Mexico, and it is being played inside the national penitentiaries. Para tayong talagang binababoy tayo ng mga sabihin ko sa inyo. But this is not a time for storytelling. Suna kasi ito. So, dito na. This law will not only help us deter criminality, but also save our children from the dangers posed by the illegal and dangerous drugs. May I be allowed with the indulgence of the body? Itong bakit talaga ako galit sa toga? Let us make this a semi-formal speech. Alam mo kasi, limang pamilya members, o anim or pito, pagka bumagsak yung tatay to drugs, the family crumbles. There's no more home to. Druga, and if he's receiving his salary in a glalala, the trabaho sa pantalan, 300 a day. 
Tapos ang Cebu is sold at two. He has about 100 to bring home. Kaya pag gano'n, nag-aaway-aaway na ang mga bata, hindi lang kapag-aral. Ang iba, ligaw na mga babae into early prostitution o ano-ano nangyari. Hindi lang alam itong mga na this is happening all over the country every day. And what is really very tragic is this. When the family starts to crumble, just the more family home, and variably, the wife would look for another. Now the husband would look for a job, usually, easily, gone sa abroad. At yung kaasawa, aalis, yung ba, lalaki na sa droga, yung mga anak iniiwan sa kapitbahay, sa kapatid. And the ferocity of uh, the loss of the Filipino family home has been destroyed. Kaya kung ano mangyari nito, the wife works in the Middle East. I am not zeroing on any particular country, mind you. But alam naman natin, there are tribes in the Middle East which would allow rape as part of the territory of being a household. Kasama yan. Kasama talaga yan. So yan ang mahirap dyan. You have a wife there being crucified, being used, magpadala ng pera, tapos ang mga anak, asa na sa sabi-sabo na rin. Kasi these are the guys that the Shabu people would really, you know, stick by them until it crumbles, the resistance. And then you have plenty of this all over the country. Nila nila alam. Yung sinasabi nila ng misery sa itong human rights. Plus 10 yan. Not to count the victims of crimes perpetrated by people addicted to this book. That is the reason why I'm so vicious in my Galit talaga ako. Kasi nilalaroan tayo. Uh, well, I don't know. Any other president may na. Pero ako ayaw. Ayaw kong lalaroan ng Pilipino. Do not do it in my country because I will really kill you. That is a commitment safe, decent, and affordable housing is every Filipino's dream. But the housing market remains inaccessible to most of our countrymen. I renew my call for Congress to pass the National Housing Development Bill and the Rental Housing Subsidy Bill. This will enable all Filipinos, regardless of social status, to live in decent homes where the families can lead meaningful lives. I also call on Congress to amend Republic Act number 10912 for the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016. In this time of great pandemic and forthcoming reconstruction, requiring professionals to undergo seminars is burdensome and not realistic. This must end. Ito pang isa. Uh, there are may mga profession. Uh, Isingit ko na lang lahat to tell this is to inform the nation. May mga profession hmm, that they would require uh, I think it's the nice they would require them to come to Manila to retrain 
and uh, for uh, another round of expenses. Itong mga seminar, seminar na ito, dapat mahinto. I don't know in all their provinces, but during my time, yung to sa barangay na barangay expeditions ng mga uh, official hininto ko rin yan and uh, which reminds me uh, I will act on this also due time we heal our health professionals as heroes now is the time to pass the advanced nursing yan ho Nursing Education Act and below instituting the Medical Reserve Corps. COVID-19 will not only be the last pandemic. We need to create National Disease Prevention Management Authority to better respond to future outbreaks. We can we count on Congress to full support. You can just let remain for a while in the Department of Health kung wala pang pera but you have to expand the services uh, it would also instill a little bit of money but not really as much as expensive when you set up a department in the long term we are looking into the creation of the National Disease Prevention and Management Authority to better prepare for the pandemics take lives and allow development to proceed even in the worst of times. We are counting on the full support of Congress for this critical, important endeavor. Uh, I don't know, but uh, I leave it to Congress to really, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's another department uh, the, the, the same, uh, it could be a multi-layer redundant thing between the health and the proposed uh, department. I call on Congress to prioritize the passage of a law for the unified system of separation, retirement, and pension and of the military and uniformed personnel without, however, diminishing the benefits that our uniformed personnel are entitled to under existing laws. There is a need to adjust the pension system which will be applicable only to the newly hired uniformed personnel so as not to cause a ballooning effect against the budget of the military in the years to come and yet maintain the pension benefits those already in service under the present law. This issue needs a solution now. Umpisa natin ngayon para hindi na maging problema sa sunod ng mga taon. I cannot run anymore. Yung dinoble ko yung sweldo ng, ng police pati army. It was really a, a, a clarion call para um, for them also to have a decent uh, life and that they're able to get the things uh, which ordinarily cannot be reached by any government employee. Knocking the on is uh, in corruption. That maybe, it might be a vain attempt, but maybe dagdagan uh, ng sweldo para it would be a hedge against uh, uh, corruption. We must also modernize the Bureau of Fire Protection 
and the Bureau of Immigration with urgency. Alam mo sa Davao, and uh, if you go there, I can show you. One of the serviceable trucks, fire trucks, that we have in the city of Davao. Of course, ang city meron ng sarili aside from the Bureau of Fire, Bureau of uh, Fire, which is really national. Meron yung Bureau of Fire, would you believe it, serviceable still. Ang pangalan ng truck is Judy Baker. Ang, ang katawan, ang, ang talagang matatag ang katawan. Kaya ang makila isuso. Pero okay pa rin. It can put out. But, totoo. This is how this uh, Bureau of Fire issue medyo na, na, na overlook natin ng matagal. I emphasize the creation of the Department of Disaster Resilience and our people's safety which cannot be delegated to any council or commission. Equally important is the establishment of evacuation center in every city, province, municipality throughout the country. We must act before another major disaster shakes into action. Problem is, disaster and even a fire this cannot be a make uh, this cannot be made a study for projection when the earthquake would suddenly come and make a big crack there si natin alam talaga ang ibig kong sabihin this will require more than just one brainwork kung paano talaga itong how to prevent or avoid disaster. It could be, by the way, just before starting, I was tempted to say it, pero baka magtindigan kayo, it would be alright for me if Bongo will just stay. Wala akong problema. Sabi ko na this uh, piece of speech of mine would be one of the longest sonas that I will deliver. Nakita ako yung page pagbigay sa akin. Yung ibang input akin. Pag yung iba lak lahat. Ang nangyari po, binali ko sa kanila make it short. Pagbalik sa akin, mas makapal na. Ako po, tangin. Eh, nandiyan na ngayon. Ito na ngayon. The responsible extraction and equitable distribution of natural resources remain among my non-negotiables. I reiterate the need for the passage of the National Land Use Act. Land Use Act which has been pending for decades. Pakisilip lang ko ninyo yan. For the rest of my term, I hope to see concerted efforts in protecting the environment. The rehabilitation of Boracay Island showcased our resolve to safeguard the environment. Boracay is doing well because of its scenery. If it's only a coconut and a black sand, a white sand and water, wala yan. Pero you add the the visitors there then it becomes a very tempting destination. We have seen a remarkable emergence of the island back to its former glory. 
I want this sustained. I ask Congress to enact a law creating important ito. The Boracal Island Authority or BIDA. We need it. I cannot stress enough the importance of agriculture. The growth of our economy depends on a robot, robust other agricultural sector. We must utilize the coconut ito isa. We must utilize the coconut levy for the welfare of our coconut farmers and the development of our coconut industry. I urge everybody, both of the uh, executive department, pati ito, that ito yung pera na nakuha doon sa na sequester and itong perang malaking ito uh, we'll gamitin ito for the uh, welfare of the farmers the problem is we can no longer trace who are the farmers of yesterday Marcos was Marcos is a distant star we do not know Ako alam ko because we had a little piece also that was uh, covered by the land reform. Hindi na natin malaman kung sino ang may-ari. So I think Congress should look uh, uh, again and try to sort out how best the money can be utilized. I, I, I will not make any suggestion, but I leave it to Congress to decide what to do with it. Once again, urge both houses of Congress to pass a version of the bill establishing the Coconut Farmers Trust Fund. Tulungan natin ang ating mga magsasaka pagka hindi mawawala yung pera. Billion yan. Diyos ko po. Well, anyway, the... We have learned so many lessons along the way. I am also requesting Congress to pass the Rural Agricultural and Fisheries Development Financing System Act. We aim to provide adequate, accessible, and formidable food, affordable food for every Filipino through the Plant, Plant, Plant program. After the build, 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 I think this is easier to achieve. A few good men, a uh, few good regional uh, directors, DAR, and uh, dedicated workers down below, could make this thing a success. Mas madali ito kaysa build, 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 ito, plant, plant, plant lang eh. It is more of uh, the, uh, well, how you try to convince the farmers to cooperate government for their benefit. This uh, 66 billion agricultural stimulus package will help the agricultural and fisheries sector recover. I hope so. We need to build trust and confidence in online transactions, stronger protection of online consumers, and enabling measures for online business needed to the enactment of an, of an Internet Transaction Act. This is very good. I thus direct the Department of Trade and Industry and other relevant agencies to work on it closely with Congress, ensuring that the provisions of the proposed bill are responsive to the needs of the consumers while promoting the growth of e-commerce in the country. You are tired of clapping, you just see so I can make a shortcut. Pabilisan lang. 
On the path of better governance, we travel with other partners, both old and new. <laughs> Have help bolstering the antiquated public health system for bringing home our laid of Filipinos overseas, for filling in supply gaps for crucial medical supplies and equipment and staple food for these and many more. The Philippines, thanks all friendly nations, will never forget your kindness and your timely support. We in ASEAN and beyond the Philippines, we will continue to work with partners to address global perils and ramp up cooperation to secure for our peoples greater peace, progress, and prosperity. The Filipino nation claims its rightful place in the community of sovereign states. Thus, we will continue to pursue an independent foreign policy. Let me be very clear about this. May I cut my prepared speech? Alamo, I read a little, a little over three weeks or last month. Uh, the Americans uh, would in, intend to go back to Subic. Uh, I'll just put on record my thoughts. I have nothing against America. I have nothing against China. But if you put business here, you double the spectacle of a most destructive thing. Just like Manila during the Second World War, during the retaking of this city. One of the most devastated cities in the world. Kaya nang maglagay-lagay ka ng base at this time. This will ensure if war breaks out because there would be atomic uh, arsenals brought in. This will ensure the extinction of the Filipino race. We work without fail to protect our rights in the South China Sea, neither beholden nor if pawn to anyone. We broaden the boundaries of Philippine diplomacy. We build productive ties with everyone willing to engage us on the basis of equality and mutual respect. And we redefined our relationships with our most important partners, placing the country in a far better position to advance our interest in an evolving regional order and emerging global problems. Now, Plenty of critics, both sides, claim about nothing has been done to retake uh, uh, forcefully or physically uh, the South China Sea. Alam mo, unless we are prepared to go to war, I would suggest that we better just call up and treat this, I said, with the diplomatic uh, uh, endeavors. China is claiming it. We are claiming it. China has the arms. We do not have it. They are in possession of the property. If you remember the property, your lawyer property rights. They are, it has nothing to do with the Philippine uh, laws of property. But it's akin to, they are in possession. So what 
can we do? We have to go to war. And I cannot afford it. Maybe some other president can, but I cannot. Tumutil ako dyan, sabihin ko sa inyo. I'm willing to admit it. Talagang inutil ako dyan. Mamangwa. I, I cannot. The moment I send my Marines there at the coastal shores of Palawan, tinamaan ang cross missile lahat yan. Hindi pa nga naka set sail yan eh. Sabog na. Let me see again that the victory in a global battle against COVID-19 would take longer than we expect. Everyone's cooperation is needed. I know that you have, the Filipino people, have sacrificed a lot, but we have no other choice but to work together and to do even more. I must admit that our actions have been far from perfect. Totoo yan. I admit it. I was really and providential dumating yung panahon na hindi ko rinigi then I saw the contract nung nakita ko yung contract na saka yung linya na ano yung choice transmit yung linya ng ano it belongs to government the best of the, line, of the transmission lines, whatever, government gets it first before anybody else. Thank you. I am true.